Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, we saw the contributions of Adolf Martens and how his contributions are important in the field of metallography, although they are not directly related to martensitic transformations. Then we saw the martensitic transformations are not only seen in steels, but also in superalloys, that is copper nickel, nitinol, and iron manganese kind of alloys, etc. And then we started with the characteristics of martensitic transformations. And we saw the first characteristic that is martensitic transformations are diffusionless. And this is because the chemical composition of martensite and that of austenite are the same. And these can be measured by atom probe tomography. Now we will continue with the characteristics of martensitic transformations and we will go to the different kind of an alloy system from iron carbon and we look at the indium thallium phase diagram. So here in this phase diagram, so here it is indium 100% and here it is 100% thallium. We see the FCC and FCT structures depending upon different percentage of thallium. The indium thallium alloy systems are very very important. Special studies in this indium thallium systems are made for single crystals of this alloy and they are of special interest. These crystals should be carefully annealed and not bent or damaged and then they undergo martensitic transformation by motion of a single interface between the cubic parent phase and the tetragonal product phase. This transformation, this particular martensitic transformation does not occur by the formation of lens shaped plates or even parallel sides plates, but by the motion of a single planar boundary that crosses from one side of the crystal to the other. Because as I just said, these studies are made on single crystals of this alloy. So single crystals means only one boundary, only one interspace will be there when the martensitic transformation starts. And it will be very easy to see it under a microscope. So on cooling this single crystal, an interface first appears at one end of the specimen and with continued cooling moves down throughout the entire length of the crystal. Because of the dimensional changes accompanying the reaction, its progress can be easily followed with the aid of a simple dilatometer that permits the measurement of the specimen length to be made as a function of temperature. A typical set of this kind of data is shown here. Notice that on cooling, that is from 348 we are cooling the length of the specimen begins to change so if you reduce this you can see the length of the specimen it begins to change at approximately 345 kelvin around here you can see this changing signifying that the martensitic transformation started at this temperature ms denoted here it is customary in all martensitic transformation to designate this MS as the start of the transformation of martensitic transformation. The curve also shows that the specimen did not transform completely until the temperature was lowered to about 340 Kelvin. So you see the transformation started here and it was transformed till here. This latter temperature, that is MF, is the martensite finish temperature. In order to move the interface from one end of the specimen to the other, it was necessary to drop the temperature 5 Kelvin below the MS temperature. During this temperature interval between MS and MF, the interface or the habit plane does not move steadily and smoothly but rather it is in a jerky fashion. So you can see 
from here to here it is moving in a very jerky fashion it is not a straight line it moves very rapidly for a short distance in the direction normal to itself and then stops until further decrease in temperature hence giving it enough driving force to move it forward again the irregular motion of this interface is not apparent in the dilometer measurements but may be readily observed by watching the movement of the interface under a microscope this particular indium thallium martensitic transformation is reversible on reheating this sample the specimen reverts not only to the cubic phase but also to its original single crystal orientation if recooled the original interface reappears and the cycle can be completely reproduced provided the specimen is not heated to high temperatures or held for too long times in between these cycles it however does not retransform in the same temperature intervals as that in which the forward transformation occurred a hysteresis in the temperature dependence of the transformations is characteristic of most martensitic transformations now if we try to look at this hysteresis loop and tally with our phase diagram we can make a continuous cooling curve at an indium thallium where indium is around uh, 82% and thallium is around 18% at this particular point this diagram has been made and from that you can see the ms and mf temperatures might be in between 345 and around 340 kelvin so that might be the start and stop of this particular composition so these kind of diagrams have to be supported by a phase diagram and if we could have had a ttt diagram here it would be even better so from this data we can conclude that one of the characteristics of martensitic transformations is the reversibility of these transformations when heating and cooling provided that the specimen is not heated to too high a temperature or held for a too long time in between cycles here i will be demonstrating a general view for this martensitic hysteresis loop so the present phase depends on thermodynamics the transformation between austenitic and martensitic phases occur over a range of temperature so we need to define temperatures at which different transformations take place that is ms and mf okay so you can easily uh, do this demonstration i'll be giving the link for the same in the coming slide so as the temperature increases the material remains in the martensitic phase until it reaches the austenite transformation temperature that is as at as the martensite phase begins to transform into the austenitic phase at the af that is the austenite finish temperature the martensitic phase is fully transformed into the austenite phase all it should be noted that the full transformation may actually correspond to a certain proportion maybe 95 maybe 96 maybe 99% of the material being transformed okay so that is why it is a flattening slope so now we start the cooling down of this sample at ms the martensitic phase begins to grow inside the austenitic phase at mf the austenitic phase has fully transformed back into the martensitic phase and this all is your hysteresis loop for any martensitic transformation so you can carry out this demonstration here from this particular link and from this you would have seen there is a fixed as 
it's austenitic start temperature austenitic finish temperature a martensitic start temperature and a martensitic finish temperature depending whether you're heating the sample or you're cooling your sample we had just seen this particular uh, hysteresis loop for the indium thallium system where i just said that this hysteresis loop can be completely reproduced provided that the specimen is not heated to too high temperature or held for a too long time between cycles but a general question that might come to your mind what happens to this hysteresis loop if we hold at a certain temperature for a certain time say for few hours 5 to 6 hours till now we have seen that the martensite transformation in the indium thallium occurs as a result of temperature changes that increase the driving force for the reaction that is the free energy we'll talk about it again in in the next lecture the progress of the this particular transformation accordingly is not time dependent in theory the faster one cools the specimen the faster the interface should move right so with equal amounts of transformation resulting at equal temperatures so time does however have a secondary though negative effect on this transformation for isothermal holding of the specimen at any temperature between the start and end of the transformation it tends to stabilize the interface against further movement here you can see the indicated transformation curve corresponds to a specimen whose heating cycle was interrupted at 345 kelvin and held at this temperature for 6 hours not only did the holding of the specimen at this temperature not induce additional transformation it is a horizontal line still so no increase in dilometer length is seen furthermore it also stabilized the interface in order to make the interface move again it was necessary to increase the temperature by 1 kelvin to have enough driving force to keep the transformation moving an equivalent phenomena occurs on cooling as well so if you do the same thing while cooling so it can be concluded that the formation of martensite in the present alloy depends primarily on temperature so this is a temperature dependent transformation and this is called a thermal transformation this is quite specific to the indium thallium system but we have seen this also in our iron iron carbon systems so here you can see the ttt diagram of our iron carbon system from this ttt diagram if i take my sample from an austenitic temperature and i quench it to around 200 degrees centigrade then i can see a 1% martensitic transformation and the rest the white areas that you can see is retained austenite similarly if i quench to the m50% then only 50% of it is transformed to martensite and if i hold it there then the remaining will always remain as retained austenite and similarly for the m95% quenching it will lead to 95% conversion of austenite to martensite and the remaining 5% will be retained austenite so the volume per fraction of the martensite is a function of temperature and not time no matter how long you hold it at ms at m50 m95 you will have only 1% 50% or 95% of martensite even if you hold it for 10 days 20 days it will be the same amount of martensite this shows the earth thermal nature of martensitic transformations
So in this course, we have seen different classification of transformations and you have read about homogeneous transformations in the previous parts. You might have seen there is an a-thermal growth for martensitic transformations. But this is not completely true because the iron nickel systems show isothermal transformations. And we will talk about these exceptional martensitic transformations in the iron nickel systems in the next lecture.